checks yeah, that you gave to her or you paid I, on her behalf? On her behalf. Did you ever give her any money directly, any money directly to her? Yeah, a couple times. Most of it was... What is the, do you have a, an itemization there? Yes, I do. Did you make a copy for the defendant? I uh, know I haven't given a copy yet. You have one there for her? Oh, no, I don't. Prior to any of these being paid, did you ever discuss oh, with the, the defendant the fact that you were doing these things for her and that you would uh, that she would repay you? Uh, yes, because at the time when I met her, I was a cab driver making very little money. And um, she does movies, and she's an exotic dancer. She makes pretty good money. And she needed most of the costumes for her shows or, or when she but travels. she makes pretty good money, and you don't make... No, and you don't. weren't making much money. Why were you advancing these sums? Because she said she could pay them back really quick. Did you ever ask her for any money? Yes, I have. She did pay a couple times. Well, and she paid you a couple times? Yeah. But How it, much? It was... She paid once... Once $300 cash and once $300 from her, her company check. There's also a few other um, ways that she owes me money. That's written down here. What other ways does she owe you okay, money? Okay, one, um, I helped her move for a few hours one day and she promised to give me $100. When and was that? This was in a big, let's see, probably the middle of March, early April. And um, one is for, um, since I, since I met her, we became friends. Um, she said that she, if I give her rides like to work and to the airport where she, um, you know, goes up to other cities to do her, um, her dancing, that she, in one lump sum, she'd pay me back all the rides. So I. How many rides did you give her? Well, she called um, my work every day. How many rides did you give her? Let's Please, see, sir. Uh, about. About. Probably 40. 40. 40. 50. What did that amount to? How much? Well, I just took the, um, the, the longest rides, the ones to the airports into a work, and it came up to $683. Uh, Mr. Morrow, I'm going to show you this list he gave me. He did have a copy, apparently. He says he advanced monies for these various things for your benefit that you agreed to pay him for these things? No, Your Honor. Um, Art, he really liked me. He really liked me. He was in love with me. And he bought those things for me thinking that maybe I would have sexual relations with him or that maybe he had a chance at being with me. That I had was a, your conclusion or did he that say was, that? That was the conclusion. He really, he loves me. He really liked me. He had my pictures all over his house. He would call my friend and tell my friend how much he loved me and how much he was upset that I had a boyfriend and he wished that we could be together. And his way of trying to get me was buying me gifts. He never loaned me money. And I did give him money because he called me crying. Did you I, give him $300 too? I gave times? him, I gave him money. What I gave was that him, for? Because he was a really good friend of mine and he told me that, you know, he needed money. He didn't have a lot of money and he was about to get kicked out of his apartment. And that's the type of person I am. When I see someone in trouble, I'll help them. And I gave him that money for that reason. It wasn't because I owed it to him. It was because I wanted to help him, and he was my friend. Are you the lady that, he, that she's talking about? Mm-hmm. You talk to him? Yeah, he used to call me up, and uh, he'd be upset because cause he was in love with Deidre. Is that what he told you? Mm-hmm. And he was upset that she had a boyfriend and that she... When did he call you and t tell you these things? This was a long time ago. I don't know exactly. How long ago? Last year, November, October. But that, I was there on several occasions and witnessed. Um, or when he'd be so proud, he'd say, I bought Deidre this dress. And he'd tell me that. He was proud about it, that he bought it for her. Mr. K, did you talk to this lady? Yeah, yeah, I talked to her a few times. Um, did you tell her that... You were in love with Miss Morrow? No, I just told her she was a friend. Were you in love with her? She was just a friend. Were you in love with her? No, not really, no. Just not as a friend. really? She was like one of my you best friends. You a little friends. bit in love with her? Well, maybe just a little bit, and that's about it. A little bit? Yeah. Okay. Did you have pictures of her all over your apartment? I have apartment? pictures of, well, I have two pictures of her because I have pictures of all my friends in my apartment. Yeah. Were they pictures of her in a dancing costume? No. What kind of pictures were they? 
they were just regular, regular outfit. Regular just, outfits? Well, I guess you could consider it Where, how a dancing did you meet outfit. Her? How did you meet her? Um, she called up one day for a ride, and I met her. We came talking and became good friends. Your Honor, I'd like to say something. I have um, a tape here that's 45 minutes in length, and what it is is all the messages she's left on my um, answering machine asking, um, could I lend her money for this? Could I lend her money for that? I even have... Um, um, all right, let me, let me, I don't want to hear 45 this minutes. 45 minutes. This one's been edited a little bit. There are four messages on here saying she'll pay back or a couple she'll pay back, one to borrow. Your Honor, may and, I say something, please? Art is very known for buying women gifts. He feels as if he had any, he didn't have any friends. And I've done so much for him. I took him on the road with me dancing. I paid him a thousand dollars. I paid where, for his, where'd you take I him? took him to New York and Philadelphia. I paid for his plane fare. I paid a thousand dollars for him to just be there with me as just a friend. Did, you give you, did she give you a thousand dollars? She gave me seven hundred because Your she... Honor, I gave him, I gave him a thousand dollars. And what I also cash? did, I gave him a thousand dollars cash. I gave him a thousand dollars. No. I gave him a thousand dollars. I paid for his plane fare. I paid for his food. I paid for everything. Everyone at the club could witness that he was totally obsessed with me. He followed me everywhere. He told everybody how much he adored me. And he bought me those things as gifts. And I called him and I told him that I would give him some money to help him because I was his friend. You know, he doesn't make Well, let's hear the tape and you can tell me if this is what you said. Okay. See if it's queued up. Okay, this one should be ready to go. This is like four messages that's borrow or... How do you start this thing? Yeah, just, just press this button right here. Don't, don't press the red one, press the one right press there. Press it over here? Yeah. See if it's up. You listen to this now, because I'm going to ask you if this is what you said. Will the defendant's phone messages sink her case? We'll hear more after this. Hi, I'm Lori Resnick, and I'm a digital effects compositor on The Crying Child, and you're watching USA. Well, I'm not really applying paint. on the phone, we get to read your email, we get to read your faxes, but what we want to do this summer is see your home videos. We want you to share your home videos with us. We the defendant's phone messages proved the money he advanced the exotic dancer were loans. That tape? was my voice, and I did. You, did wait a minute, just take it easy. Did you tell him you needed a bathing suit for this contest? Yes, I did, and, and he you bought. 
Did you ask him to loan you the money for it? I asked him to loan me the money, but after he bought me the bathing suit, he told me that I didn't have to pay him back. How much was the bathing suit? It was $60. Did you ever tell her you, she didn't have to pay you for the bathing no, suit? Because she knew Your I didn't make did. that much money when I was working Did you at tell the him you'd help, help him, that you'd pay for... Uh, if he helped you to move? Yes, I did. And what he How said... How much was that? That was $100. And what he said, when he helped me move, he said, well, could you just take me to dinner instead? And I took him to dinner. I took him and another friend of mine. I took him to dinner. He's doing this because... Did, he he... Take, did she take you to dinner instead of paying you the $100? Yeah, but she just said, thanks for helping. No, not instead. She said she gave me the 100 which I never received. But she goes, um, that's the day I met her friend, Anne-Marie. And she goes, let's all go for... Um, down the, down the what did you no. did you say on the tape I'll have some money for you next week? I told him that did he did you say that yes, on the tape? Yes, I did because right, he what? called me to borrow money. He called me to borrow money. He said, "Listen, he said nobody cares about me. My family doesn't care about me. I'm getting kicked out of my apartment." He said, "Could you please give me some money?" He said, "I really need it." And I called him and left him a message on the machine. I was out of town. I was in San Francisco, and I called him and I told him, "All right, when I get back next week, I'll I'll give you some money so that you won't get kicked out of your apartment." Were you going to get kicked out of your apartment? Uh, yes, sir. As a matter of fact... Um, Did you ask because, her for some money? Yeah, because of all the months that... This was just last month. Out of all the times that I've done thousands of favors for her, taking the cab... Who are these ladies rides, here to testify? Are they here to testify? Oh, yes, they are. She had one conversation with... with yes, Deirdre. I'm What Art, is your relationship to him? I'm Art's stepmother. You had, a you had a conversation with Miss Kay? Yes. When? Uh, no, I'm, I'm Mr. Kay. That's tomorrow. I'm, pardon me. <laughs> Well, you had a conversation she with She called Ms. me about a month ago, and she was very nasty. She called me a white whore. She said that any of the monies that she owed Art, she wasn't going to pay him because he ruined her life and that he could get thrown out. No, Your Honor. She called my house. She called my house. She said, listen, Art tells me that you owe him money. You hurt my son. He She's really liked you. She's a liar. I don't even she have her me. telephone number. She called me. She got my number from Art because she lives right upstairs from him. Art could have went upstairs and gave her my number. <clears throat> she called me and told me that I was a whore and that she was glad that my relationship was broken up with my boyfriend. He called my boyfriend. He wrote my boyfriend a letter and said, if, if you give me a certain amount of money, then I will tell you everything Deirdre has ever done. He ruined my relationship with my boyfriend and then my boyfriend found out later that it wasn't true so what he was trying to do he was trying to frame my you know frame my boyfriend so that he can get money but what he wants to do he wants to get revenge he loves me I told him that I could never have a relationship with him I told him our friendship would last longer than any relationship I've ever had and he's obsessed with me and this is his way of getting back at me because he's hurting right now right. because I won't talk to him oh. now, your honor I never said that I would pay him anything I said I would give him money because he really needed the money he didn't have a lot of money I make a lot of money I didn't I heard, have to borrow I heard money it, from him. I heard it. I heard it. I heard it. Take a short recess. I'll come back and give you my decision. If you were the judge, how do you think you would decide this case? Would you find for the plaintiff or would you find for the defendant? We'll be back for Judge Wapner's verdict in just a moment. Welcome back. You're watching USA Live with the People's Court. Now, our next guest is the author of this book. It's called Let Him Eat Cake. It has been... After hearing the testimony, our courtroom observers say they really weren't convinced by the plaintiff and they would find for the defendant in this dispute. So, let's hear what Judge Wapner's verdict is. Remain seated and come to order. This court is again in session. <clears throat> plaintiff brought this action therefore has the burden of proving by a preponderance of the evidence that the parties had an oral contract for the defendant to repay the plaintiff for monies and gifts that he advanced to her. No, not gifts, but money and items that he advanced to her. Uh, she's claiming they were gifts. A plaintiff uh, submits as a proof of the fact that these were loans, some items on a tape, an answering machine, uh, I'll pay you to help me move. Parties agree. She said she would she would pay him $100 to help her move. And then when it came down to paying the $100, she said she took him out to dinner instead. And uh, apparently he was willing to accept that. At least that's the conclusion I come to. As to the bathing suit, uh, loan me $60 to buy a bathing suit. Uh, she's going to be in a show. He did buy the bathing suit. 
once she got it, he said, forget the money. Uh, I'll have some. Once she got it, he said, she explains it by saying she was going to help him because he was being kicked out of the apartment. And he admits that he was being kicked out of the apartment. And she was going to loan him some money. So those things on the tape don't prove the oral, any oral contract to repay. Uh, I think what happened here was the fact that because the plaintiff was completely obsessed with the defendant, uh, finally admits he was a little bit in love, or he loved her a little bit, I don't know what the exact words that he used. Um, because of that, uh, she took advantage of him. I don't think there's any question, but she, she uh, used that as an excuse to accept these uh, gifts over a period of time. And when he couldn't get what he really wanted, uh, the relationship ended. But uh, that's the problem here. But there's no proof of an oral contract. Judgment is for the defendant. <laughs> Welcome back to USA Live with the People's Court. Susan J. So, as Judge Wabner puts it, there really was no contract here, and uh, the defendant pre prevails. Mr. K, do you, do you agree with what the judge says? No, I really don't. It's like I did thousands of favors for her to take her rides in, in a taxi every day, didn't charge her, and, you know, when I needed a favor from her, uh, there was nothing. You know, she couldn't even help me in rent. She wouldn't return my calls. You know, she even on the tape, like she said, she'd uh, give me some money back as she owed me, but, you know, I think it's a real bad decision. It's only money. She lost the best friend she's ever had, you know. It's, All right. That's about it. Thank you very much. Right. Officer you. Brown has some documents you must sign. Thank you, ma'am. He's waiting for you. The defendant, uh, Ms. Morrow, is now on her way out of the courtroom. Let me ask you something. You said your friends told you uh, that he was obsessed with you. I think you probably had an inkling of that, didn't you? Not at first, but when I went to his place and saw my pictures all over his wall, and I mean, I really, it was really scary. I really began, began to think that he was really obsessed with me. But I didn't know at first. We were just friends. I mean, we did everything together. I mean, we were really good friends. Do you have, in any way, do you feel that you kind of took him for a ride? Um, maybe I shouldn't have taken the gifts. He knew that I had a boyfriend from the beginning. You know, he knew that. And he bought me those things because he wanted to. And maybe I shouldn't have taken the gifts, but that was where I made my mistake. All right. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Officer Brell is waiting for you to sign a few documents, and that will bring this case to a conclusion. It is also going to have to close it out for this session of the People's Court. We are out of time for now. I'm Doug Llewellyn, thanking you for joining us and reminding you that if someone files a lawsuit against you, but you're convinced you've done nothing wrong, don't let that action intimidate you. You go to court and stand up for your rights.